So somebody asked about which medications we were thinking about in secondary causes of IIH. And so I, I put that in quotes because it seems to be a misnomer if you say it's idiopathic to be also be secondary. But this is what the literature says. To me, that's kind of an oxymoron that it's secondary and idiopathic. To me, idiopathic usually means primary. There's no cause. However, you should know that patients who meet the modified DANDY criteria for IIH, that is, they have a normal MRI and an MRV except for the symptoms and signs of radiographically and clinically of increased intracranial pressure, and have an elevated intracranial pressure but normal spinal fluid content could still be secondary to a medication. And the most common medications that we see are te tetracyclines and its derivatives, but usually minocycline because it passes the blood-brain barrier, vitamin A analogs, and that includes the retinoic acid, which is used for acne. So these two together are often used in combination to treat uh, acne. But any vitamin A analog, including ATRA, which is all transretinoic acid, which is used in the treatment of certain forms of leukemia. And then you got steroids, which is usually the withdrawal of steroids, not the use of the steroids. And then there's some other less common ones like lithium and medicines we probably don't even use anymore, like nalidixic acid. However, these are the top ones that we ask about. Even though birth control pills are always on the list, the mechanism of the birth control pill causing pseudotumor cerebri is from venous sinus thrombosis. Uh, the birth control pill by itself probably isn't the cause. It's a secondary cause through the thrombosis mechanism. So we always ask about the birth control pill, but really tetracyclines, vitamin analogs, steroids, lithium, nalidic acid, those are the top things we're asking about for medication-induced secondary IIH.